The Adventures of Everyday Geniuses. If you're so smart, how come you can't spell Mississippi? Written by Barbara Essam. Illustrated by Mike and Carl Gordon. My dad is the smartest person I know. He is one of the busiest lawyers in Chicago, and he works hard to keep justice in our city. For the past year, my dad has been getting ready for a big case. Have you ever worked on anything for a year? I'm a third grader at Westover Elementary School. My name is Katie, and I'm only eight but I've been working on something too. It's called observation. It's fun because, let me tell you, I've seen some strange things. Like the time David, a boy in my class, couldn't resist squeezing the pudding cup that was packed in his lunchbox. He had to see how much pressure the lid could take before, well, you know, And the time my little sister insisted that our family change her name to Eduardo after she finished watching the Cooking with Eduardo show with Grandma. My little sister is only three years old. I guess she thought it was time for a change. Just last week, I saw Mrs. Higgins driving through town with 14 chihuahuas in her car. And those were just the chihuahuas that I could count as she was driving by. As you can see, observation is a worthwhile pastime. But the strangest thing I ever observed happened tonight while I was practicing for my spelling test. I asked my dad if he could help me with the toughest word on my spelling list, Mississippi. Usually, my dad loves to help me, but this time he said, I'm not sure, go ask your mom. How can you, Daddy, one of the smartest people I know, not know how to spell Mississippi? I asked in astonishment. Well, Katie, I have never been a very good speller. In fact, I don't believe that I have ever spelled Mississippi correctly. Actually, there are a lot of words that I have never spelled correctly, he answered. This is the strangest thing that I've heard of, Daddy, even stranger than Eduardo, I replied. How did you make it through the third grade if you couldn't spell Mississippi? Well, it wasn't easy. I was often ashamed of not being able to spell the words on my spelling test. In fact, some of my classmates even made fun of me, he said with a serious smile. Daddy, do you mean that you were kind of like Mark Twinkle? He sits in front of me and he can't spell anything. I guess I was like Mark Twinkle, he said. It's very difficult when you're the kid in class who works extra hard and still has trouble. I had to spend so much more time on my homework than my sister spent on hers. I would still come home with a C- minus on my spelling test, and that was on a good day. Oh, that's terrible, I replied. It was terrible and also confusing. I mean, my dad is smart. Learning to read was just as difficult, said my dad. I was the last kid in my class to learn how to read. Sometimes I would hide my head when my teacher would ask me to read to the class. Just like Mark 
does, I shouted. How could this be? My dad, just like Mark Twinkle. This doesn't make sense. Katie, we've talked about dyslexia before, remember? Dyslexia is a word used to describe the difficulty that some people experience with reading and spelling, like me, he said after looking over my math homework. But Daddy, how do you do your job? How do you be so smart if you can't spell or read very well? I asked. <laughs> Katie, dyslexia doesn't mean a person isn't smart. In fact, some of the greatest scientists, doctors, and inventors struggle with the symptoms of dyslexia, my dad said with a chuckle. Now, I've observed many strange things, but could it be true that Mark Twinkle is the next great mind of our time? Is it possible? I would need to do a little investigating before I was convinced. On Saturday, I asked my mom to take me to the public library. I'm a whiz at the library, and it didn't take long to find a book about dyslexia. It included a list of people throughout history who struggled with reading or spelling. But I'm confused. Now that we know about dyslexia, why is it still a secret? Why hasn't anyone ever mentioned it or these folks in school? Like this guy, Dr. John R. Scoyles. He works as a neuroscience researcher. Whoa, he researches things I can't even pronounce. Where is the librarian when you need her the most? One of his books is titled The Etiology of Autism, Neuroembryology and Prefrontal Neocerebellum. I guess I'll learn about that in the fourth grade. In the meantime, I'll ask some of my friends if they can say prefrontal neocerebellum three times fast. <laughs> I turn the page to read about Martin Archer, a chemist who won the Nobel Prize in 1952. Fortunately, the librarian walked by. Mrs. Meeks, can you help me read this? Some of the words are a little big, I asked quietly. Sure, I love to see children reading on the weekends, she said. Let's see here, said Mrs. Meeks. Martin Archer's experiments include the discovery of a method for detecting pyroelectricity by observing the attraction of metal plates of crystals that have been immersed in liquid air. Katie, do you need this information for a book report? She asked with a puzzled look on her face. No, no, Mrs. Meeks. I'm just doing a little bit of investigating. Detecting pyroelectricity in liquid air? Is anyone following me on this one? Do you want me to keep reading? Mrs. Meeks asked. Oh, yes, please, I replied in my most polite voice. I needed help to get through this book. Helen B. Tossick was a doctor in the 1930s. Many women at that time didn't even have a chance to go to college. But Helen Tossick studied to become a pediatric cardiologist. She helped to discover a new way to help babies who were born with heart problems. She was the first woman to become a full professor at John Hopkins University and she was elected president of the American Heart Association. She was really smart, I said. I have to go help some other children now, Katie. Do you think you can take it from here? Asked Mrs. Meeks. I'll give it a try, I replied. 
if Helen Tossick had trouble reading and writing and she could become a pediatric cardiologist, well, I guess I can try and read this book on my own. Let's see. William James was a psychologist, one of the greatest psychologists of all time. It looks like he had a lot of interesting things to say. A few of them are right here in this book. Hey, think my dad has a few of his books at home. I don't sing because I'm happy. I'm happy because I sing. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. Every good worth processing must be paid for in strokes of daily effort. Hey, my dad has this quote framed. He keeps it on the wall for everyone to notice. Do every day or two something for no reason than its difficulty. There are so many names in this book. It would take a long time to read them all. I guess a lot of people who have trouble reading and writing go on to become great things. Actors, artists, athletes, presidents, doctors, lawyers, writers, scientists, entrepreneurs, inventors, and even teachers. I wonder if my teacher, Mrs. Peterson, knows about dyslexia and all these great people. I have a feeling that most of these great people had someone to help them through the tough times when they might have been feeling frustrated or sad. Maybe their parents were patient and supported them. Maybe they had a teacher who could see how smart they were anyway. Maybe the classmate sitting next to them didn't make them feel badly for not being the fastest reader or the best speller. Now I know why my dad likes what William James had to say so long ago. Do every day or two something for no reason than its difficulty, William James. Is this what people do? who struggle with dyslexia tell themselves each day before school? Did my dad say this to himself through the tough times when he was trying his best to learn to read and spell? I can't wait to go to school on Monday. I think Mark Twingle needs to know how great his mind is and what incredible things he might accomplish one day. Maybe I'm just the right person to tell him. The end. I hope you've enjoyed this story. If you're so smart, how come you can't spell Mississippi? <laughs> Grandma has a confession. When Grandma was a little girl, I couldn't spell. It was horrible. It, it was so bad. Grandma got made fun of in the third grade because I misspelled the word bird, B-I-R-D, bird. Can you believe it? Grandma was so embarrassed and I got made fun of so bad, but I kept practicing and even though it was very difficult for me, I learned and now... Grandma has friends who ask me how to spell things. It's so funny to me that now Grandma is the one that people ask. Also, Grandma hated it when the teacher would call on me and she would want me to read out loud. Oh my goodness, I couldn't stand it. I was so embarrassed. I would stumble over my words. And now look at me. Grandma's reading stories on YouTube to all of y'all where thousands of people are listening to me read online. So just remember, even if you're scared, just keep trying and keep practicing and keep doing it. And one day you'll be great at it too. And grandma might even ask you how to spell something. 
I also know about dyslexia. My daughter has dyslexia, and so does Annie, the little girl who has been on some of my um, videos. They have dyslexia, but they try really hard, and when they flip a letter or a number backwards, they just have to remember to practice more, and they'll get it. So that's what my daughter and Annie are struggling with. But those two girls are so smart. So I know everything will be wonderful. Well, I want you to keep reading and keep practicing. And remember, you don't forget to come back for more stories. Bye, Grandma. Thank you.